Okay, let's start the next uh, lightning talk. Uh, let's uh, welcome Chris, uh, speaking of uh, Android on Raspberry Pi. Okay, well, good afternoon, stroke evening, and uh, here's my talk about Raspberry Pi. So first question, who here has a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, almost everybody. Who here has a Raspberry Pi running Android? Uh, two, three. Who would like to run Android on their Raspberry Pi? Yeah, okay, that's what we're about. So let's go for it. Um, so skip that, skip that. A little bit of information here about me. Um, I've, I'm a uh, freelancer. I've been training and teaching Linux and Android for a long time. But the main question then is why? Why would you want to run Android uh, on a Raspberry Pi? And from my point of view, my motivation is really educational. Uh, by doing this, I learn a lot about Android. So it's not to say that the end product is actually all that useful, although it could be with a little effort. Uh, but for me, the journey is the, the important part. The destination is not so important. So it's a good testing ground, and it's fun. Yes, it really, really is fun, so long as you enjoy long hours sitting watching things compile. Um, so more generally then, what do you need to run uh, Android? So you need this bunch of things here. You need a processor that Android supports, which is basically uh, ARM, X, uh, x86, and MIPS uh, in various ver variations. Um, it needs to have support for a fairly recent version of, of Linux. So uh, if you're looking at, as, at um, Android Pi, then uh, that requires uh, uh, Linux 4.4, for example. Um, you need a reasonable amount of RAM. You can just about run Android in uh, half a gig, although a couple of gigs works better. Uh, and you need a gig of uh, flash memory. Again, ideally, uh, 8 or 16 gigs works better. Um, you need some kind of display. doesn't really make that much sense to run Android without a display, although there are people who do that. Uh, but generally speaking, you need some kind of display. And talking about displays, you need some kind of uh, video drivers. So you need support for OpenGLES 2 for Android to work at all. Um, and that tends to be the sticking point, and I'll address that later on. So kind of things you can use, these are a bunch of dev boards that I picked off my shelf um, late last week and took a photo of. So there's a BeagleBone there, there's a Raspberry Pi, uh, there's a, a Dragon board there, I think, and a few other bits and pieces. So these are the typical things that I use to run Android uh, at various times. So why out of that bunch uh, choose the Raspberry Pi? So the Raspberry Pi makes quite a good uh, dev platform. It's well supported. Uh, it's uh, ob easily obtainable. You can go and order it from Amazon or wherever else you like. Um, it's cheap, which is a good thing. Uh, it's hackable, but mostly because it's there. It's capable of running Android, so logically it should run Android. So that's what we want to do. Um, hasn't this been done already? Well, yes, obviously. Uh, so I'm by no means the first person to, to want to do this. I just want to go through a little bit. I'll go back, it's going to be echoey. I just want to go through uh, some of these things on this slide. So probably the most uh, important uh, one is the top one, the uh, Android RPi project, which has been going for a few years now. Um, and if you go look at the uh, GitHub for that, you'll see it has been forked uh, over 100 times. So that means there are at least 100 different uh, versions of Android uh, running on Raspberry Pi. Um, next one, Lineage OS. So uh, Consta uh, has done a version of uh, Lineage OS 15.1 uh, running on Raspberry Pi. S uh, some of that work is based on the, uh, the Android RPi project. Uh, plus merging in, of course, the Lineage OS uh, stuff. And what I'm going to show in the next few slides is kind of based on Consta's 
uh, Lineage OS 15.1 uh, version. Um, next on the list, so RT Android is another interesting one. So RT Android came out of a research project by uh, Igor Kalkov, and uh, the particular uh, attribute of that uh, was to run uh, a real-time Linux kernel. So take Android, take Arta, a real-time Linux kernel, you have real-time Android. Um, and then he spun that off into a company that's now called uh, Interior OS, and uh, they uh, have kind of commercially supported uh, Android for Raspberry Pi. It's, uh, it's not open source, but there are free there, there's a free version you can download if you so wish. Uh, and then last on the list, a um, little company called Google also do this. So Google uh, have this thing called Android Things, which is their IoT version of Android. And um, one of their supported platforms is the Raspberry Pi. And kind of as a result of that, actually, they did some work on the graphics. They did this, some work on, on this thing called uh, uh, Swift Shader, which is the graphic GPU that I'll be using. So if you want to go ahead and do this, what do you need? Um, the main thing you need really is uh, um, patience. Yeah, time and patience are the, are the key requirements here because you're going to end up building uh, Android many times over. And if you've ever built Android uh, from AOS uh, P source code, it, you know it takes an hour, maybe two hours, depending on your hardware. So what follows then is kind of my interpretation of this. Now, the kind of reason I got into this is that I wanted, so I run training courses on uh, how, to, how to port Android to various things. And I wanted a platform to do this on, uh, but it has to be uh, running a current version of Android. So mostly what I've done is I've taken Consta's uh, uh, lineage uh, 15.1, which is based on Android uh, 8. Oreo, and I've updated that to run Android Pi. Hence, on the uh, title slide, this is Raspberry Pi meets Android Pi. <coughs> Things that tend to go wrong when doing this, or particular aspects of the, the, the Raspberry Pi, first of all, the graphics, we'll come back, come back to that in a moment. Uh, another little itty bitty thing which kind of is annoying is that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a USB on the go port which means that it doesn't support ADB particularly well. And if you are uh, familiar at all with Android, you'll know that ADB is one of the key tools for developing Android. Um, yeah, this graphics thing then. So this is always a problem with mobile platforms. Uh, most mobile platforms expect uh, to or re require uh, some kind of 3D uh, acceleration of the graphics. But because of the complexities of the embedded uh, GPU market, there is very, various amounts of support for, uh, uh, for, for, for the GPU. So generally speaking, what you end up doing is your first option is to take the OpenGL binaries from the uh, vendor of the, of the chip uh, and, and hope they work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Broadcom don't support Android, so there is no uh, built-in support for, uh, from them. So that doesn't work in this case. Uh, another option is to use uh, the soft GPU uh, called Swift Shader. That should always work because that's uh, purely software, but it's kind of slow. And then another option is to use uh, the, oh, the, the, the community open source uh, MISA uh, OpenGL libraries with uh, DRM HW Composer. So HW Composer is the component in Android uh, which interfaces from Android to uh, the video controller. And uh, DRM, DRM HW Composer is a component which does that using the in-kernel direct rendering manager uh, support. So Swift Shader is kind of the simplest thing to do, and this is what I actually have currently in my uh, Raspberry Pi Android implementation. So in this case, you build Swift Shader. It's 
part of the uh, AUSP code base now, although for various reasons the one that's in AUSP isn't the best one, you really want to go upstream and get the latest Swift shader. Um, but plug it in, compile it, you end up with this bunch of libraries, uh, libglesv1, libglesv2, Swift shader. And it pretty much works. Or you can use uh, the um, uh, full uh, hardware accelerated uh, uh, stack based on OpenGLES. That uses a DRM HW composer, and there's also a DRM Gralak component. And you'll also need a DRM uh, support for the, v for the um, video controller you have, which in the case of the Raspberry Pi is the VC4, the Video Core 4. Um, that kind of works, except I couldn't actually get it to work in the last couple of days when I was trying this out, so uh, I actually ended up using uh, Swift Shader. And then the final thing is uh, ADB. So ADB requires uh, a USB port that is in peripheral mode, not in host mode. And usually this is done through, through the OTG uh, hardware. Uh, annoyingly, the, the chip itself, uh, the, the Broadcom chip, actually has an, o, uh, an OTG port, but it's used internally within the, uh, and within the Raspberry Pi to, call, to create the bridge to the, uh, the, uh, the Ethernet and uh, the actual uh, USB host, so we can't actually use it. However, you can do um, uh, AOB over, uh, sorry, ADB over Ethernet. You use the ADB Connect uh, command, and you can either put android.local or, or you can give an actual IP address if you know what the IP address of your device is, and then you do ADB shell, and hey presto, you get a shell. Yeah. So it kind of works, but it's a bit annoying. So currently what I have is uh, this stuff here. So it's uh, uh, Android Pi 9 uh, release 30. And there's a screenshot of my rig as it uh, was uh, last Thursday. Uh, a little bit messy. Still, many things don't work, so don't expect this to be a fully working system. But um, it will improve over the next uh, uh, few months. Um, this is a quick uh, um, um, plug for, for, my, uh, for myself. So I'm basically a freelancer. I work for myself. I done trading courses. I can tell you in much greater detail how to do this, not only for Raspberry Pi, but for other uh, targets. Relevant links then, so um, the stuff I'm talking about is up on GitHub, as you can see there. Uh, the slides should be available on the uh, FOSDEM website, but they're also on SlideShare. And if you want to contact me directly, go to turnet.co.uk. So we now have exactly two minutes. Does anybody have any questions? OK. Well, whatever. OK, over there. Please wait for the mic. Do a little dance while you're waiting. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, I was just wondering whether you have tried any Qt applications on your port of Android to the Raspberry Pi. Have I tried Qt on? Um, no. <laughs> Simple answer, no. Well, I mean, insofar as you can run Qt on Android, it should just work. But I've not tried it. Anyone else? Ah, right in the middle. The hardest, poss uh, hardest possible place to be. Thank you very much for the great talk. I was just wondering, uh, which are the recommended Raspberry Pi displays for this port on, uh, of Android on Raspberry Pi? Uh, displays with touchscreen for Raspberry Pi. Well, um, I didn't put it on the slide. Um, I just use a cheap, the cheapest possible seven inch touchscreen. Uh, so that I think is an, uh, from a company called uh, Elcro, Elicro. Um, but there's also one called WaveShare or something like that. Just go to, uh, go to, go to Amazon and uh, look for the cheapest HDMI touchscreen you can find. It probably will, will work. Um, 
It should also work with the official, uh, well actually that's no, not true, this particular version won't work with the official 7-inch uh, touchscreen uh, because I haven't actually uh, tested it, but with a little tweaking here it could be made to work quite easily. Okay, I think we're out of time, but thank you very much. Thank you.